So Drupal is not just a CMS. Drupal is an ecosystem, right? Um, it's about open source ethos. It's one of the most successful open source application in the world. Um, and I have observed that every open source application or every successful open source application has a Chetty community to back it up. And Drupal is no different in this way. Drupal has a thriving community of people. They're talking about issues, starting different initiatives you, you, you would have just witnessed. And they're also sharing memes, GIFs, and dancing parrots, and just helping each other to go one step forward, making Drupal better. Um, and Drupal is also about collaborations, contributions, be it for the documentation or code or conferences like this. Um, just imagine that thousands of people uh, sharing their stories, contributions selflessly just for one thing, and that's Drupal. However, for me and personally, a lot of you will be agreeing with me that Drupal is about flushing cases. <laughs> so uh, this is the summary of my career. This is the highest thing I've done during my career, right? <laughs> And it's not just any technical term, right? It's a hop that, you know, flushing cases twice will bring back my sight. <laughs> <laughs> and many of the time that happens, how it happens, it's magic, right? Uh, so, hi and welcome everyone. Uh, I am Amjad Khan, Salim Khan, Ibrahim Khan, Patan. But you can call me Amjad. <laughs> I know it will still be difficult for more of, most of you, but can't make it shorter than that. <laughs> uh, and also, you might have seen me on Slack channels and Drupal.org um, with my name, pen name, I would say, Amjad1233. Uh, so just before I start, I want to say um, this is my first ever public presentation. Um, and so if you catch me suddenly talking in Hindi, right, <laughs> don't be surprised. Right? It's just could be two reasons. That number two, um, I'm very nervous, which <laughs> you can feel me. <laughs> or number one, I spend too much time in Parameda and Harris Park with my Indian brothers. <laughs> so for those who, knows, who don't know, this is uh, two suburbs in Sydney with highest Indian population. And uh, they wanted to change the name of it. Uh, they wanted to name uh, to you know, honor Indian community, and I was well hoping they don't name it Melbourne. <laughs> uh, well, chanting in another language is much better than this, I guess. Right? <laughs> I don't know many of you recognize this image. <laughs> this came in, by the way, when I searched for what should I do, not being, uh, what should I not do when being nervous. <laughs> so. Um, Moving forward, I currently work at District CMS uh, as a tech lead. And um, for those of you who don't know what's District CMS, District CMS is a Drupal-based distribution. So it's a Drupal profile, basically, um, which leverages Drupal's unparalleled flexibility um, uh, for cities and governments and enterprises. So it's pre-configured uh, Drupal distribution, which you just have to install by one click. And it's a SaaS uh, solution. So with, besides the district CMS, the other product we have is called District Engage. Um, and District Engage is a community engagement tool. Um, it's multi-tenant SaaS application as well, rapidly growing. Uh, now maybe we have about 30 clients on it, 30 departments, uh, including our first gig we started on US. So there is a client from US as well. And this is to manage public, uh, you know, public consultations through you know, uh, online tools. It provides deep analytics, user interaction, and all those things. But this, the second tool is based on Laravel. Um, so agenda for today's presentation is very simple, right? There's two parts of it. Uh, the first part is about how Drupal and Drupalers, you know, uh, basically my little journey to Drupal or how we survived Drupal 7, right? <laughs> 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 uh, 
And the part two will be some boring advice, uh, whether you are a pro developer, you are a junior developer, or you are just starting up, right? Um, and by the way, most of these are not just Drupal specific. They can be applied in web industry in general, right? Um, so let's get started, right? <laughs> uh, so my first job, I started roughly around the tender age of 8,215 days. That's one way you can hide your old age. <laughs> uh, I started uh, professionally in 2010, and my <laughs> all the former and current employers in the room. <laughs> uh, so um, part of that, uh, you know, I started that job just after I finished university, and then after that, you know, I started doing, you know, multiple countries and blah, 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 like I, these 10 years, a whole 10 years, I've worked with different enterprises, you know, companies as a contractor, as a permanent, as a part-time, different positions. So that's how I came to do this talk. Um, anyway, so as a junior developer, when you starting, I had very little PHP and MySQL knowledge from uni, like when I say, uh, very little, I wanted to, no, sorry, as a, as a fresh graduate, I wanted to conquer the world, by the way. Um, as soon as I was introduced to this technology, that would change my life forever, right? And I was like, how hard it could be to create a Hello World module, which everybody does in their programming, uh, Hello World module in Drupal. And I started that, and in my case, it felt more like Hello World. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just to say, Drupal, in, you know, unlike all the love stories, it was not love at first sight, right? Um, there was no composers, there were no symphonies, and there were no good views in Drupal 7. So, learning, um, I'm, I'm not just saying Drupal 7, I've worked from Drupal 5, Drupal 6, and Drupal 7. So, the previous versions, they, the learning curve was very steep, right? It wasn't easy to pick up, you know, it was sometimes very frustrating. You can't do, learn something without getting a professional, oh sorry, an expert's help, right? Um, come to maintenance and debugging, you know, I made a lot of rubber duckies unhappy. Because <laughs> it was always hard to maintain the code, being the, you know, um, functional nature of Drupal 7 and earlier ones. Um, and the biggest pain point, in my opinion, was that templating or theming layer, right? Theming layer was particularly not very appealing. Um, the templates files were confusing. They were ending with .php. Um, and, you know, it was like doing meditation while having uh, hemorrhoids, right? <laughs> your, your site looks beautiful and everybody's praising it, but you know that pain which is, you know, bugging you. <laughs> so I was still uh, you know, into it, right? I, I still like Drupal, mainly because Drupal was a great uh, CMS, and it is still great CMS, I mean. Um, it was far deeper, you know, um, connected to site builders. Um, and then, you know, it came Drupal 10, right? Everything changed. So you might have attended Dries note, and he spoke about calls now modern Drupal, right? And e learning is as easy as piece of cake, right? You, if you know all your OOP and, you know, PHP frameworks like Symfony, you are into it, right? You don't, you pick it up in no time. Uh, lots of resources I've seen after Drupal 8, there are a lot of tutorials available. There are a lot of uh, YouTube uh, tutorials. And Udemy has Drupal lessons as well. Um, adaptation in the market was excellent, right? Drupal is being, you know, um, I don't have to say much, this was all in Dries note, but Drupal is made for adapting moving market, right? It's one of the systems, uh, and it, you know, there are a lot of examples in there. You can see the migra migration system, which is better than Australia's migration system, I say. <laughs> you can import, you can connect it to any other bigger ecosystem, and it will just work, right? Um, not just developer experience, but you know, also site builders experience has changed. And the layer we were talking about theming, it's looking good, right? The Claro and Olivaro theme have changed um, the Drupal's looks, so to say. Um, and I think they are always 
you know being uh, developed so we are we have more to see coming on um so given the free ticket to this conference i can talk about drupal the whole day <laughs> but i want to talk mainly about how we as a developers we involve evolve with drupal or particularly this is uh, my perspective and my story how i grew up with drupal right so we talked about how Drupal has, uh, Drupal has grown up, and now we're going to talk much more about how Drupalers are going to grow up with Drupal and grow old, right? <laughs> so <laughs> for this, um, I did quite a bit of systematic and scientific research, right? Um, drinking almost 1,000 coffees, having so many sleepless, uh, sleepless nights. Um, and I kind of uh, categorized all this in these three main stage of a life of a developer, right? So I used a method called 5W1H. I'm sure you, everybody will be familiar, but it's 5W questions like what, when, how, and 1H is the how, right? So just to, um, just to explain that I've put it in three categories, right? So uh, this is the answer the when question. So junior or entry-level developer would be zero to two years experience. Um, uh, mid to senior, you would say five to seven years, and this is not set to stone, like everybody has different views on it. Um, and tech lead or, you know, very senior developer, uh, project manager, 10 plus years, right? Um, so what they do, right? So this is when, but what about what? So starting with, you know, junior developers, they make coffees, <laughs> which is then consumed by the senior developers and criticized by the leads. Right. <laughs> um, in reality, you know, um, they also, the junior developers are very excited to learn, like how I was, right? Um, and, you know, in reality, most of junior developer is doing is they are learning, reading tickets, you know, uh, helping in support, um, you know, support department, right? Mostly, you know, sharing their solutions and not they're not at that implementation stage yet, implementation stage yet. So, uh, and then mid and senior level developers at that point at mid-career crisis, right? <laughs> and so what is mid-career crisis? I went to Harvard Business Review, and here's their definition. So too much of your time at work spending putting out the fires and avoiding bad results. <laughs> and not focusing on the purpose of your projects. <laughs> So basically, you know, mid and senior level developers at this point, they have very matured Drupal, uh, Drupal knowledge with experience, right? And th there are a lot of animations and innovations happening with them, right? So I wrote a, um, my more contributed modules in this period of time, right? Um, and also, you know, I started diving into community. So I started attending Melbourne meetups, Drupal meetups at this point. Um, not to say that you have to wait for like five to seven years to do that, but I'm just saying like when I had a knowledge, I felt more confident to go and talk to other people, right? Um, and tech leads, yeah. So they talk nonsense at Drupal <laughs> Uh And in reality, like with the tech lead position, which I've just taken on recently, you know, you talk about the big picture. You talk about the f keeping board afloat, right? Um, you are directly now reporting to CEO or CTO uh, or the C-suites, right? Um, they're not worried about which patch you're going to use, what module they, you're going to use. They're worried about the solution as whole, right? Um, and so, you know, you talking about maintainability and there are a lot of, you know, teams you are involved, you know, front end, back end, architecture, so tech leads have a lot of things going on, and that's why, you know, we come to Drupal. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so Drupal is very lucrative industry, right? Um, and a lot of people are, you know, just because generally there is always a shortage of developers. So the salaries are very high, if that attracts anybody, right? Um, and so who? That's the next question, right? Who are these developers, right? So as I mentioned earlier, I quickly touched on it. Um, 
the senior, juniors are generally starting new graduates or you know part like basically career changes i see a lot of support people coming to drupal when they are supporting drupal they then transit to uh, a drupal developer role uh, mid to seniors are more seasoned you know interested in bigger picture right uh, showing off their skills right um, and tech leads are part of furniture <laughs> yeah so um, where do you find them, right? So this is a joke, by the way. <laughs> you, juniors, you find them in LinkedIn because they want a job, right? Um, mid and senior, they have more money to f buy fancy gadgets. So you find them on YouTube giving tutorials. And leads, you find them renting about everything with paid Twitter blue tick mark. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was the part one of the presentation, right? Um, and I have now the second part, which is about giving an advice from my side, right? It's not, you know, you don't have to abide to it, right? It's just something I want to share as a fellow Drupaler, right? Um, and my advice is basically uh, to be stupid, right? Uh, and you all will be thinking, what? Like, wh <laughs> why would somebody advise you to be stupid? Of course, there's, um, you know, it's just abbreviation of something I came up, right? So SDU stands for seek to understand and learn, right? Um, there is the P for persist, inspire and innovate, and then D is for discussion. And this is my mantra I've been following for any level of developer, whether you are junior or senior or you are, you know, tech lead. This is something I've, I've been following in my subconscious so <laughs> let's start with uh, seek to understand right so nobody knows full Drupal right uh, if someone comes and tells me that I know every part of Drupal then I know either you know the person is from India <laughs> or he's from chat GPT right because yes we Indian we know everything and we do yes to everything <laughs> so um, and only I can make that joke, because I'm from India, right? <laughs> well, and the next advice is, so what I, sorry, um, besides the joke, I want, what I wanted to tell you is to grow with unknowns. So there will be a lot of things, a lot of parts you don't know in Drupal. And that doesn't mean, you know, you don't know Drupal, right? You have to just try and learn those parts when it comes, when they are applicable to you, right? And it's same for any big system, right? Any big enterprise system. Um, and the next thing I wanted to say is um, learning, right? So it almost never hurts to have something more than Drupal, right? Um, for example, having a, a separate skill like how Dries was showing, you can uh, engage uh, something like artificial intelligence or front end from React or something else you want to add to Drupal. It always is helpful. And I found that very helpful during my career that if you have something plus Drupal, you always kind of make a difference, right? Um, and the lastly I want to say is uh, avoid using Drupal more than where it's necessary, right? So I had this crazy idea of uh, creating a neural network with Drupal nodes, and that should not be it, right? So you only use Drupal as a content management system. It's very good at managing content, manipulating content, you know, so don't use it for, for example, machine learning, right? Uh, so that's that. And so coming to persist, right? Um, you know, it's about keeping the momentum going, right? Um, the tech world right now is very noisy, right? So you will see a lot of technology moving and Drupal is no different, right? Um, so you will have a lot of tech noise. You will think, oh, I should learn AWS or I should learn, I don't know, React or something else, right? So what I want to say here is, um, just take a moment and do the technology which, will, which, which is concerned to your project or the problem you are solving. Then and then you're going to remember. Otherwise, you will just get down in, you know, subscribe in a lot of tutorial websites and you will never use them, right? So keep the momentum going, you know, keep solving your problem, experimenting, innovating, right? But you can use these technologies when that's the time, but just avoid the tech noise. Um, 
and maintain the balanced pace, right? So if you go too comfortable, you will lose all the creativity, right? If you are too comfortable, if you're doing the same job every day, you will lose the creativity. And if you are challenging too much to yourself, right? If you are getting a step forward, but too much, then you will drain yourself. So keeping the maintain uh, balanced pace is very important. Um, and yeah, inspire and innovate is, you know, you've seen a lot of talks about this in this conference. So I don't have to say much, but you know, just share what you have with the broader community, you know, teach others, bore people at conference with your stories, right? Like this one <laughs> and make a module, right? If you have a solution that can help other, this is an example of making a module. But if you have a solution which can help other, just make a module contribute to Drupal.org. This will give you, number one, it will give you, you know, love from people. Like if people are using your module, you will get a lot of, uh, uh, you know, admiring admire there. And number two, you have a portfolio. You're building your own portfolio in the open source world, which, which is boosting your employability, right? So if you have like five modules you are contributed to, uh, that definitely, you know, I, I would look at if I hire someone, you know, um, or, you know, just feel about uh, contributing back to community, all right? Um, and the last point I want to discuss here with the inspiration is, you know, choose a company which inspires you to innovate, right? There are a lot of companies out there which, you know, um, which let you give this wiggle room where you can do something extra from the client's requirement, right? Um, and don't fall down into the salary uh, increase, you know, pitfall, right? Salary trap. So salary will always increase because you're going to be experienced. I've never seen people becoming more experienced and getting less salary. That's never going to happen. So what I want you to choose is, you know, uh, a company which gives you more uh, boost on innovation, right? Uh, a company culture which promotes that. Um, so, for example, you know, at my company where I work currently, uh, I, I love cybersecurity and I'm a practitioner in cybersecurity. So they give me, you know, I, we literally have a certain amount of hours allocated every week to experiment, right, in, in the real world projects, in the client projects, wherever you can put, you know, your input, right, um, wherever there is a use case, basically. So what I mean to say, and, and a lot of other con companies, they do by hack days, that is contrib sprint. I know uh, uh, other companies do contrib sprints and stuff like that. So what I mean by is don't go by the book companies, right? And this you will find probably in giant enterprises, uh, but go to the company which has write a new chapter, um, you know, mindset. So. Um, lastly, you know, um, engage with the community, right? Um, uh, there was a great talk recently about this. Um, so when I first started attending my Melbourne Drupal meetup, I was so amazed that, you know, how many problems we can solve or how many new things you learn. So attend your local meetup, right? So um, if not for Drupal, attend it for pizzas because in Brisbane they give us free pizzas. <laughs> so, so you know meet people uh, experts on site you know you have great resource like there's big community uh, big um, developers come there right so you can ask your stupid questions basically um, and you get answers right um, I have one example that you know um, I don't remember which code sprint but you know I got I, I was very reluctant to commit patches on drupal.org I had always, you know, put them in my, somewhere in my repo. And then Lee, who's sitting in the back, he inspired me and showed me how to set up and take out all the frictions from committing a patch. And since then, I just counted, I uh, submitted almost 41 patches, right? So sometimes <laughs> that's all you need, right? Sometimes that's the push you need from someone. And that you can only find in these community meetings or even events like this, right? So um, don't be shy, you know, uh, just come to the meetups and, you know, events and embrace the Drupal spirit, right? Uh, that's ask, participate, and never stop learning. So that brings us to the end, right? Uh, I want to say besides all these 
Apache's Drupal estimates, JS, caching, CSS, documentation. What I want you to most importantly remember from this slide is just remember to have fun, right? Well, um, you're going to spend half of your life with it, so you might spend it with fun as well, and you might enjoy it as well, right? So I thank you all for listening, right? Uh, and have a good afternoon. So we go back to 2010 and you're introduced to Drupal and I know it was a hard learning curve, but I'm guessing from this presentation that you've got no regrets. No, definitely not. That was the best thing, the best technology I've ever met. And yeah, I have, uh, you know, it was hard in terms of, you know, when you are starting from uni or something, but yeah. I mean, I was just comparing with that and currently, but yes, absolutely. Yeah. So as your employer at that time, what is the feedback you can give uh, to Jim and I on how we could have made that easier? <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> so the best feedback I can give is the persistence part. You get the show must go on part there. And that was the thing needed, right? You didn't let me go like, <laughs> didn't fire me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, here it comes again. <laughs> You've really been inspiring and motivating all your team members, including me and our, our team in district. Uh, what keeps you motivated in yourself? Like, you know, there are times, definitely hard times uh, yeah. when you're coding or working. Uh, what, what keeps you motivated to be in Drupal team? Well, um, yeah, one thing is, you know, um, the community and, and the other thing I like about Drupal is it's ever changing. Uh, it's always progressing, right? And that's something keeping me, you know, like always fresh. So like Drupal 10 has React in, in, integrated in it. So I was like more curious on how React works. So I had to learn that technology. So yes i think the the way it's changing and the way it's the whole ecosystem is is probably the best motivation uh, keeping me around just a quick one um we have quite experienced um, developers in our team um, and on different platforms yeah. so do you want to give some tips uh, for moving to drupal what how they can transition from other CMS to Drupal, and not at the junior level, at a very senior level, you yeah. have already experienced. Um, best tip I would give is just start installing and playing with it, right? It's much easier than, you know, ever, ever in the Drupal's history. So if they're playing with, for example, if they are doing Symfony or Laravel or something, they will find them very familiar with the Drupal's code base as it is right now. And yeah, I think Always I've found, you know, practically learning something. So spinning up a Drupal site or having a small, tiny project would definitely um, do the job. But it, should, it should not be that complicated uh, in terms because they have lots of experience, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they have lot of, lots of experience, that would definitely be a plus. They will make, probably, they will spin it faster than the juniors. But yes, I think if they want to experience what is Drupal, you know, they just, just spin it up, you know, in, in a local site or do a small project and you know maybe make a module that's how I learned I made a module first so that's also one way to learn it but I think tell them to join Australia New Zealand channel yeah that's where we have a lot of discussions and uh, you know they can ask questions and stuff as well if they got stuck